I was just going to give the general speaker of the house if she would like to rephrase that comment. I have cleared my remarks as a parliamentarian before I read them. And take it. Can I ask the words to be taken down? I make a point of order the gentlewoman's words are unparliamentary and risk ready to be taken down. The chair will remind uh, all members, please, please do not uh, make uh, comments uh, toward personality-based uh, personality comments. Now that was a remarkable moment on the House floor. You may have heard it live as it happened. Lawmakers were debating this resolution to condemn President Trump's statements as racist. A congressman calling out the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, in a way we have not seen in the House of Representatives in decades. Chad Pergram's our expert on such matters. Uh, he's our senior producer for Capitol Hill and is live there now. That, that was quite a thing for that room. Yeah, that's pretty rare, Shep. Uh, I mean, what you've basically had here is the congressional equivalent of being pulled over for speeding. You keep hearing this term of art, words being taken down. So what Doug Collins, Republican of Georgia, did, he thought that some of the speaker's words, some of her language about this racism uh, resolution about President Trump that's on the House floor crossed a line. And so he asked that her words be taken down. Now, if you look at the screen right now, if you look off to the left of the screen, what they're doing, you see a huddle with the House parliamentarian, Tom Wickham. They're going back through and trying to, de trying to determine what are the words that might be offensive. The speaker has to be seated on the House floor and wait for them to read back those words, and then the chair will determine whether they are in parliamentary uh, decorum or not. Emanuel Cleaver, a Democrat from Missouri, is presiding. This resolution has been problematic from the start when it comes to just this issue, and I'll tell you why. They use Thomas Jefferson's manual on congressional procedure. That's one of the three main volumes they use here in Congress. And it says, quote, that you cannot use language that is personally offensive to the president. Now, there's also something they use that's the canon book of precedence. This is not uh, speaker canon. We're in the canon rotunda here. This was Clarence Cannon, who was another congressman from Missouri. And his uh, booklet says here that personal criticism of the president innuendo, ridicule, or opprobrium are out of order. And so what Doug Collins is asserting here is that Nancy Pelosi is out of order. And you have to go back, Shep, to 1985. Tip O'Neill was then the Speaker of the House, and you had Newt Gingrich, who later became Speaker. He was a backbencher, and he jumped up one night. There was a big kerfuffle on the floor and demanded that Tip O'Neill's words be taken down. And if the offending member of their words are judged to be out of order, they are penalized by not being allowed to speak the rest of the day. That's why this is so rare to have a member of the minority call out the Speaker of the House. Nancy Pelosi said there, we all heard it, I cleared this through the parliamentarian before I read these words. Had she? And does that do it? Or is there more? Well, it was interesting this morning, you know, she told the House Democratic Caucus uh, that she was going to kind of forge ahead regardless of what the parliamentarian thought. Keep in mind that they can overrule the ruling of the parliamentarian and the ruling of the chair. And that's why, as they're in this uh, kind of pause, this stasis on the House floor, we're probably going to have a vote whether her words are ruled in order. You can see the Republicans wanting to appeal that ruling. And if her words are ruled out of order, the Democrats would want to appeal that ruling. So this will result in a vote anytime soon here. And what this does is it pushes back the final vote to, probably to later tonight on whether or not uh, the president, whether the House believes the president was using their term racist language. Regarding this resolution to condemn the president itself, is there any indication that any Republicans might vote in the affirmative here? Uh, we think that that number is going to be in the single digits. In fact, I spoke off the record earlier with one Republican member who had put out a pretty, you know, strong statement condemning the president, but said, I won't vote for this resolution. And I asked that member, I said, wait a minute, the most powerful thing you have is a vote on the House floor. Why not, you know, make your voice known through that vote on the House floor? And the member said, no, I've expressed my concerns to the White House. I've asked for some time with the president. Uh, and so you're going to have a lot of Republicans, almost all Republicans, vote against this. And Kevin McCarthy, the House Minority Leader, and Steve Scalise, the Minority Whip, were both urging a no vote on this resolution when it comes up later this evening for a vote. What does that tell us, if anything, about the politics of a Republican going against the president? 
Well, that's the problem here, and I've, I've spoken to a lot of Republicans here that does this put them in a tough position. You know, there was some thought that the Democrats really, with this uh, resolution to start with, that they were trying to weaponize this. Either you stand with the president, and that puts some Republicans, especially those in swing districts, in a rough, uh, you know, having a rough vote that's on the record there, or if you vote against the president, you, you know, you're breaking with the president, and maybe that ticks off 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. So this is a tough vote, and it's weaponized both ways. Yeah. Did, did some Republicans say things differently behind the scenes? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, we've heard a lot of that, a lot of whispers. You, you know, some of them just kind of throw up their hands and say, this is the problem. And this is where I asked uh, the House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy, and also the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, earlier today. They've made a point about calling out these four freshman Democrats, these progressives, based on their politics and based on their ideas, socialism and so on, as, as, as the Republicans see it. And I said, does this undercut your effort to portray them that way and criticize their policy position? and their political points of view when the president says something that many interpret to be over the line. And both of them basically said yes. Mitch McConnell said, you know, I would rather address the policy issues. And, and Kevin McCarthy said, anytime you inject personality into it, it makes it harder. So, so in some respects, this might be a scenario where even though a lot of people in the middle, voters in the middle who are swing, uh, swing voters, they might not like the policies here, but they think that they've gone too far when the president calls them out. And that's a problem for Republicans because it, it messes up the Republican message. Is, is there anybody in that body who can give the president a phone call and go, come on, slow down? Or does no one have that? Well, you know, Kevin McCarthy, you know, one reporter asked him today, said, you know, you are somebody who, you know, is pretty close to the president. You talk with him regularly. But it was pretty clear when we had some of these Republican members coming back into the Capitol on Monday for the first time since the president had this tweet storm on Sunday uh, that they weren't going to ad address this. They weren't going to go forthright. You had Liz Cheney, uh, the number three Republican in the House, the House Republican Conference chairwoman, Republican from Wyoming, calling out Ayanna Presley, accusing her her term that some of her language has been racist. And so, you know, Republicans, what they've been trying to do is turn this around on those uh, Democratic members. And that was something that I asked uh, the Democratic uh, freshman at the press conference yesterday. You know, would it be different uh, if maybe they hadn't put some of, the, some of those statements out that were controversial on their own, uh, on their own part there, Shep? Chad Pergram, you're the man. Thank you so much. Thank you.